Hello and welcome to the International Daily Roundup by People's Dispatch, where we bring you major news developments from around the world. Our headlines, Palestinian activists warn of mass arrest campaign by Israeli forces. Arcelor Mittal workers launch strike for better pay and benefits in Canada. Iran and IAEA extend monitoring agreement as nuclear deal talks set to resume. Farmers protest against police brutality in India as struggle reaches six-month mark. In our first story, Palestinian news agencies and activists have warned of a 48-hour mass arrest campaign in the occupied territories in Israel. As reported by Quds News Network, Israeli forces are set to launch Operation Law and Order against a, against a bank of targets, so to speak. Over 30 Palestinians from the occupied East Jerusalem have already been arrested in overnight raids. Youth organizers have stated that thousands of forces, including Border Patrol, have been deployed in Palestinian villages and cities. As per reports, at least 500 Palestinians will be targeted for participating in the uprising over the past month. The Palestinian Prisoner Society has reported over 1,400 arrests within the past two weeks alone. Metal bars and other barriers have been installed at the entrances of several villages in the West Bank. Meanwhile, Israeli settlers stormed the Al-Aqsa Mosque compound for the second consecutive day on May 24th. Local sources stated that over 100 settlers entered the compound with the full protection of the occupation forces. Israeli forces have also placed a blockade on the Sheikh Jarrah neighborhood in occupied East Jerusalem. Palestinians are reported being forced to show their ID and no one from outside the neighborhood is being let in. Meanwhile, Israeli settlers were often armed and allowed to enter. Similar to Sheikh Jarrah, 87 families in Silvana are facing ethnic cleansing and forced displacement. The Jerusalem municipality has ordered a demolition of over 100 buildings, impacting about 1,550 Palestinians. As per reports, families have had their building permits rejected because the area has been designated as an open landscape area. The municipality has also withdrawn previous agreements to offer the Palestinian families land to build in other areas. A district court is set to hear the appeals filed by seven families on May 26th. Activists have called for a protest outside the court on Wednesday. We now go to Canada where workers in the ArcelorMittal company have been on strike. Organized by the United Steelworkers Union, 2,500 workers in the Quebec province launched an indefinite strike on May 10th. This was after the workers rejected the company's so-called final and comprehensive offer with around 99% of the votes. Workers from ArcelorMittal's mines, port and railways, security and offices have joined the protest action. Permanent picket lines have also been set up at the company's facilities in Port Cartier and Fremont. Workers have been fined for violating COVID-19 curfews. However, the union has stated that pickets are necessary to make sure that the anti-scab provisions are not being violated. Workers have been demanding better wages and permissions, especially at a time when the price of iron is at a record high. The company has recorded its highest quarterly profit in a decade with $3.24 billion in earnings by April 2021. Meanwhile, workers have also asked for allowances as they are made to live and work in remote areas. They have also accused the company of not fulfilling the promises made during contract negotiations in 2017. These are related to healthcare and cleanliness and quality issues in work camps and food services. While the full details of the company's latest offer is not available, it includes a total wage increase of 12% over 4 years. The contract accepted by workers in 2017 had a wage increase of 22 to 3% every year. The company has now reportedly informed the striking workers that it is ready to revise its position. In our next story, the International Atomic Energy Agency has announced that it has extended its monitoring deal with Iran by a month. The Iranian Speaker of Parliament, Mohammad Bakr Khalibaf, had announced on May 23rd that the agency would no longer have access to its nuclear sites. This followed the expiry of a three-month agreement between the government and the agency. The deal has now been extended to June 24th. The Iranian parliament had passed a law last year stating that all IAEA inspectors must leave the country. This was after the assassination of prominent nuclear scientist Mohsen Fakhrizadeh in November. The action was also in response to the imposition of unilateral US sanctions after its withdrawal from the Iran nuclear deal. However, the government signed a deal with the IAEA in February announcing allowing temporary access to images and footage from the nuclear site. Iran had opened its sites for international inspection in return for lifting of the sanctions under the nuclear deal. However, Iran has also deviated from the provisions of the deal, citing non-compliance by other signatories. Talks regarding the possible return of the US to the deal have been going on since April. The fourth round of talks were concluded in Vienna last week. As negotiations are set to resume again, signatories have signaled that an agreement is within reach. Iran has maintained that it will return to full compliance with the deal if the US revokes all sanctions. And finally, we take a look at the ongoing farmer struggle in India. May 26th will mark six months since hundreds of thousands of farmers began their protests at the borders of Delhi. They have been demanding that the far-right central government repeal three farm laws, which they argue will enhance corporate control while dismantling key protections. Thousands of farmers also held a protest in the state of Haryana on May 24th. This was following a brutal attack on a protest held last week when police used tear gas and wooden batons. 
Around 350 people were arrested and charged with murder, attempt to murder, rioting and unlawful assembly. Farmers gathered outside the commissioner's office today to demand that the charges be dropped. Meanwhile, the Farmers Coalition has issued a call to intensify the struggle with a nationwide protest on May 26th. Here is Ashok Dhawle from the All India Kisan Sabha or the All India Farmers Organization to talk more about the upcoming protest. The two major issues on which this 26th May nationwide protest action is going to be held is number one, the extremely criminal way in which the Modi government has handled the disastrous COVID pandemic in India. The whole country is riddled with COVID and many of these deaths were preventable. As the entire world knows, thousands of deaths have occurred due to lack of oxygen, lack of ventilators, lack of hospital beds, and lack of medicines. The Modi government is solely responsible for this extremely grave catastrophe that has befallen India. Even regarding the vaccine policy, the entire country is demanding free and universal vaccination. This is also what the Modi government is not prepared to accept. The second issue that we are also highlighting is that in this one year of the COVID pandemic, the Modi government, while completely ignoring all these very major factors, has, on the contrary, passed a slew of legislation which is aimed against the two classes that actually produce the wealth of India. And these are the producing classes, the workers, the farmers, and the agricultural workers of India. The Modi government has targeted them selectively, and every step that it has taken has been taken to increase the super profits and the wealth of the handful of corporate companies, both Indian and foreign, like the Ambani's and the Adani's, and also the multinational corporations. What has it done? It has passed the three anti-people farm laws, which are being opposed tooth and nail by millions of farmers of India. It has passed the three labor, four labor courts, which are being opposed tooth and nail by the entire working class of India. It is trying to pass the electricity amendment bill, which will lead to the whole scale privatization of the electricity sector. And that will lead to a tremendous increase of electricity tariff all over India for the working people. The farmers movement has demanded that it pass a central law instead, which will guarantee minimum support price and procurement for all the crops in India on this very genuine demand, which demand has been made in the light of the fact that millions of farmers have died because of suicide in India, because of the neoliberal policies of successive central governments over the last 25 years. And that is why this central law demanding minimum support price and guarantee of procurement the Modi government is absolutely not paying any attention. And the fifth major issue that all of us have raised together is the disastrous privatization drive of the Modi government, which is leading to the privatization of every single sector, right from railways to banks, to insurance, to education, to health, and to even defense production. That's all we have time for today. We'll be back tomorrow with more news from around the world. Until then, keep watching People's Dispatch.